it's shedding light on such a fantastic sport opportunity to create a movie around, you know, something that your father clearly has many, many awards in. Yes. Uh, I think that that's great. I've never seen a movie based off of these cars. I actually never even knew these cars existed until... You'd be surprised how many people do not know exist. I know, yes. but now it's like, now it's going to put it on such a scale where mm-hmm. like, dude, these are cool. Ladies and gentlemen, you wanted it, you got it. The place for the untold, real, raw, and juicy stories of dirt track racing. It's Dirt Track Confessions. And now here's your host, Mandy Pouch Mahaney. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Dirt Track Confessions. I'm your host, Mandy Pouch Mahaney. Today we have an amazing guest with us, <laughs> Brittany Palmer. Brittany, welcome. Thank you. So if you guys, I know you've been paying attention. So there is a motion picture being filmed at Bridgeport Speedway here in New Jersey. And we are going to really dive into it with Brittany because she is one of the main characters in the movie. She has an amazing role of one of the the main sisters racing. So if you kind of want to shine some light into that. Yeah, so uh, I am playing Amanda, which is the film is about Pony and Amanda, two race car driving sisters, and I am her older sister, the more um, calm, tame one, the better racer, I might add. Uh Um, But yeah, it is really, really exciting, and you are my best friend. Yes, I get to I get to play Harper. This is we're gonna see how this pans out. I'm really excited. So, (laughs) kind of back us up though, because. I mean, you're, you're, you're green. You're really fresh to the racing world. Yeah. So kind of give us a backstory on Brittany. Okay. So, well, first I'm green to the acting and the racing world. Yeah, okay. So this is all very new. Um, you know, I grew up in Las Vegas. I was a professional dancer right out of high school, dancing okay. in the big Vegas shows. Teach me. And I will. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I was, when I was 21, I was in a car accident and, uh, when I was in recovery from that injury, I started painting. And from that point, I went to art school and became an artist. And that whole time, because I was a dancer, I was working with different talent agencies. And when I was 19 years old, I was called for a casting to be the WEC ring girl, Oh, which is the sister company to UFC. It's is like that, the lighter weight class. Is that a tie-in from the dancing? Or no, It was just, I think the dancing was because I was a dancer. I was with modeling agencies and talent agencies so they had called me for the audition and um, I was 19 years old and I went in to the Hard Rock Hotel in Las Vegas WEC got the job I was the octagon girl for the WEC which the WEC was like the lighter weight class it was 55 and under so that's like Uriah Faber Cowboy Cerrone Ben Henderson like all of those incredible lightweights that came out Mm -hmm. like Jose Aldo Um, that's who I was with. And so I ended up being, you know, working with the WBC, which ended up getting, you know, merged with UFC for 16 years, 16 years, 16 years. I just retired in December. Retired. I know. (laughs) Retired. I don't even want to know how old you are. (laughs) I'm 36. Yeah. She's retired at 36. Well, but it's like, it's interesting because a lot of people were like, how can you retire? But I think that when you do something for so long, Mm. it's like, that's, you know, there's, I didn't quit, you know, yeah. it's like, I just was like, I'm ready for the next chapter. And I guess this is the next chapter. Yes. Okay. I'm still super curious. I know yeah. we're going to talk about the movie, I promise. Yeah. But what does the life of doing the, the octagon like? It's a lot of time on the road. Okay. Um, we travel a lot. So we usually would leave on Thursday, um, depending on where we're going, where in the country or uh, the world mm-hmm. that we would go. Um, Friday we have weigh-ins. So you kind of, there's like a lot of downtime as you would imagine. Like you're just kind of chilling in your hotel room. You do the weigh-ins. We all go get dinner. That's like our favorite thing. Friday night, usually for years, we would all just go get completely wasted. And okay. <laughs> and then now we're all older. So we would stop doing that because Saturday is the full day of working. Like we get oh my there, God. be yeah. hung over doing that. It's and we can't eat. I mean, we can eat, but we don't eat yeah. because we're oh, in those little outfits. Everyone's looking at you. Everyone's yeah, looking yeah. at us. Um, and then, so we get there an hour before the first fight and, uh, we're there till the last bell. That's cool. Yeah. That's cool. Yep. And so now fast forward, how, how, how did you even get this part? Well, it's interesting. Um, I was actually, so when I decided to retire, 
from the UFC. Um, I was in New York and it was last November Okay. and I had gotten a call. So in the UFC and MMA world, we have the MMA awards Mm -hmm. and we've had them for years and they basically get the best knockout, the best fighter, the best female fighter, like everyone the best promoters and we, they're awarded. I've won ring girl of the year several times and I'm so grateful for that. And the fans all vote. So it's really cool. And I got a call from the award show and they said, Brittany, guess what? I'm like, what? <laughs> like you won. Um, you know, are you going to be able to come to the awards and blah, blah, blah. I guess I'll be there. And I was in, the, it was in New York city and I was just like, I was like looking around and all of a sudden I was just like, I think I'm done. You know, like it was nothing that triggered. It was just like, mm, I think I'm good. Like next, I'm, next, sti- next yeah, step next. in life. I've done yeah. this. I've done this for so long. It's like, let these other girls like come in, like, mm. you know, so then I made the decision to announce my re- retirement on stage on ESPN. Oh, so t- literally, like, you just decided that weekend. and I was done. Good for you. I just like was like, I'm good. Yeah. And then I was like, I'm going to do it at the award show, and I'm going to do it on ESPN. Like, I'm going to go out like a boss, like yeah. on top. Like, here's my award. I'm out. Yeah. So I did. But to get to your question, I was walking the red carpet, and um, I hear my name, and there's this guy named Hawk Yonkins. Mm-hmm. And he is a, he's a commentator. He's also an actor and a producer and a writer. And I hear Brittany Palmer and I'm and I like, look at this big guy and I'm like, hi. And then he turns on, he's like, oh my God, I just said your name. I'm like, I know. And he was like, I was just saying that I was most excited to see you tonight. I was like, oh, well, you know, surprise. Here I am. And, um, he, we're on the carpet and we're having this full blown conversation. And it's like, not the time. Cause you're getting photos. And, and I was, yeah. just, and so he's like, no, but I really got to talk to you. I have to come up to you. I'm going to talk to you. And I was like, okay, yeah, I'll see you there. Sure. So we go into the, um, to the venue and we're waiting and I have my mom and I have my whole family. Everyone's out to support cause they knew what I was going to do. No one knew by the way, not even Dana White. Oh wow. No okay. one knew I was going to retire. Yeah. I told Dana right before I walked on stage, I was like, just so you know, I'm quitting. <laughs> and, um, so anyway, he came up and he's like, I have this project. I really want you to work. I want to work on with you. And I just, I'm writing this movie and I just think that you'd be fantastic for it. I'm like, okay. I'm not really an actress. Yeah. No, nothing I studied really, but I'm down. So I give him my number. A couple weeks go by. I get an email from Bobby. Yeah. And I'm like, and this is about a whole other part. Different. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> what's going on here? Like, why are so many acting roles coming into my world right now? Like mm-hmm. when I'm was actually planning on doing something else. Like I'm still doing my art heavily and I have a gallery in Vegas and we're having like other artists come in and I'm supporting them and it's really incredible. I'm like, well, this is an interesting like turn of events, Mm -hmm. you know? So I'm like, well, let me just see because you know, I'm a firm believer in like whatever is happening to you is happening for you. So let's just give it a go. So then, so I send my audition tape into Bobby and then he was like, okay, I want you as Amanda. And then Hawk calls me and he was like, okay, so we want you in this role for this show that I can't say right now. And I'm like, okay. So he's like, but I need to introduce you to my friend and who is the film financer and another director, Skylar, Sky Alexander. I was like, okay. So then Sky calls me and he's like, I want to put you in this, 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 this. And I'm like, he's like, yeah, he's like, I want to build up your IMDb. So you have like credit and you're also getting more experience because this role that I have coming up with Hawk is so big and it's so like, it's, it's not indie. It's like a union. It's a really big project. And he, they want me really like, you know, seasoned for it. Of course. So then, (laughs) so now (laughs) I have, here we are. And I have, uh, three movies uh that are slated um and then like a bunch of others in production and we're just kind of waiting for that to happen that's incredible (laughs) literally I as soon as you said like it's if it's meant to be it's for me you know and the universe is speaking to you it knew like okay this door closed this one's opening how is it like the night of the award show that I retired is when Hawk was and when I tell you my mom was like dude that guy's weird (laughs) But like, I, and he's, he's legit. Like it's yeah. real. Like I was like, yeah. I was like, no, cause you know, I'm from LA. So yeah. I've, you know, how many job offers I've gotten. Exactly. <laughs> like well. we're going to make you a big star. And I'm like, mm-hmm. don't want to be a big star, but like, I want to do fun stuff. I want to mm-hmm. make cool stuff. I want to, can I cuss? Yeah, go ahead. I want to make cool shit, you yeah, know, yeah. like I want to create art in every way, whether I'm painting or whether I'm creating movies or just like relationships with people. I think mm-hmm. that that is what is what makes us human and what is about the human experience is just to keep creating and it just never stops, you know? And I, I love that you talk about that because 
I share a lot my journey to where I started to where I am. And people are like, well, how do you get to where you are now? I'm like, literally, it's one door closes, another door opens. It's who you meet along the way. So tell us about your acting coaching, right? Mm Because you're not just jumping in and reading lines. No, no. My thing is, is I think that we could do that if we wanted to. Try. But... I am, and I think I mentioned before we jumped on, I am very sensitive Mm -hmm. and I don't take criticism very well. I am, I'm a cancer. So so. everyone be nice. So be nice to me. (laughs) No, so I'm taking it very seriously. I have two acting coaches. Um, I have one that I work with one-on-one in um, LA and he's fantastic. He, uh, he has his uh, whole background in acting. His dad was a acting professor at a college out there. And then, um, Jonna, who is my acting coach, who I met through Sky and Hawk, Mm -hmm. um, she is now playing Priscilla, my mother, in the movie. I was able to get her that part because Bobby needed some more, you know, he's still casting. So I just was like, God, wouldn't that be sick if, like, my first movie, my mother was my acting coach? Because then I just will have that person with me on set at all times. And, like, she plays a mother role in my life. And she is a mother of like daughters who are like our age. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, so that's it. It's, com- it's comforting. <laughs> it's, it's comforting. It's comforting to know I have that like that protection. But I mean, I'm working hard. Um, once we actually get slated on when we're going to start, yeah. I feel like then we can all start working together. Mm-hmm. And that's what I love about like having this like more of an indie feeling of the movie is because you- Are you enjoying this episode, want even more, or want a closer connection to the DTU fam? Join us over in Club DTU where you'll receive early access to all of our podcasts, live race day updates, exclusive content, special merchandise, discounts, a community chat, personal recognition, and so much more. All inside one place, Club DTU you and I could work together and like we can all be on a zoom and just literally just rehearse the shit out of it. So once it's game time, we could play with the character and play with like, it's not just about reading lines. It's like, what do you bring to the table? What cute cork are you going to be adding to your character to make you interesting to watch? I like that. You know what I mean? Like if you think about like, this is like a uh, mm, Diane Keaton, Mm -hmm. fantastic example. She has a cork about her and it's just who she is. Mm-hmm. So I think that um, that's going to be like the fun part is when we get to play. Yeah. It w- what what makes you you special, unique. Yeah. I like that. Rather than just saying a line, how do you say that line? What do you what what are you going to do with your hands when you say it? What yeah. are you going to flick around with? You're like there it, there's acting like what's after the lines? What's before the mm-hmm. lines? What's during the lines? Yeah. That's, I just I'm Wait, I, gosh, I can't even tell you what show I just watched on Netflix. But prime example, because there's this woman that in the in the show, she just talks like this with her hands. Mm-hmm. And that was just like her persona. Yeah. And in the beginning, I was like, okay, what's up with this chick? Yeah. But then throughout the entire series, that's just, that's it who was she is. her. Yeah, it's her shtick. Like yes. Moira Rose from Schitt's Creek. Mm, it's yes, fantastic. Moira. Yeah, but like she has, that is her just, and she created that. So when she I, read, she I, wasn't like that. I kind of like David. I love David. I love, I love David. all of them. Yes. I love I, all of I them. I just love that use, show. I always use like, are they gifts or gifs? Who the hell knows? But I'm always shit's creaking them. Oh, yes, yeah. Hands down. A thousand percent. It's yes. the best show. I wish that they didn't stop. They ruined everything. I know. I know. They need to come back. They won't. Mm. I don't think that they will. It's so messed up because they don't need to it, it would they have a second season mm-hmm. not a second season sorry they have another season in them or a movie but they made it very clear on that brown table that they're never coming back Damn. they're done that sucks i know we're mad at bubble them. bursted yeah. yeah so okay so by the time this podcast comes out guys it's gonna this is like a week ago right this recording happening um we did a photo shoot in the shop today yep. so you got to see the cars you haven't seen them raced yet not yet but what was the vibe that you picked up you know, there is this, um, there is this like comforting like air. I think it's about just like being with a team, and you can tell that your family is a team, and they've been doing this a long time to where everyone kind of is helping each other and working together. And I think I can now understand what this experience might have been growing up in it. It's yeah. like hand me the wrench, yes. you know, like let's do this. Like there's no like kicking and screaming or making this a thing. It's like it's so second nature to help. And I think that 
that is so refreshing. And I think the respect that everyone has for your father and your brother and you and, um, being in the shop and, um, even your brother actually flipped his car last, last night, night in the way that my car will be flipped in the movie, which is yeah. so cool. I mean, yes. also scary. Yes. <laughs> Not fun. Not in fun. In movies, it's fun. Yeah. 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 Like recreate that, but in yeah. my car. Yeah. And that's the energy that we're going to portray into the movie of the sisters. Yeah. And the family vibe. When, I mean, we don't want to obviously tell the whole storyline, but like the girls moving over and moving into a town that it's bad blood kind of energy, mm -hmm. I suppose. Yeah. Well, also, and I think that after reading the script, I was trying to understand why they would leave a big city to go to this small town. But now that I've left a big city and I yeah. came here, like I walk in and I'm like, this is amazing. And everyone's like, it's fine. Like, because you guys are used to it. <laughs> yeah. But I can see why, you know, from living in Las Vegas and in Los Angeles, two extremely big cities that have nothing even close to this. I can see why a family would want to come here and settle down. Mm -hmm. For change, right? Yeah. But that's one of the lines in the thing. If they keep it, I don't know. Look at her. I know. That's not my line, though. It's ponies. <laughs> oh, whatever. <laughs> I auditioned with it, so I, I know that scene well. Won't tell anybody. <laughs> so um, so we don't know, set in stone yet, how often you're coming out here over the summer, do we? We have yeah. no idea. Yeah. I think okay. it just depends, really, um, on their filming. Mm -hmm. I think that there's, like, a week slated for the summer and then a week slated for, like, one in August and one in November. Okay. I think. Yeah, that sounds about right. So yeah. so basically, for anyone in the area that wants to come out, we're going to be doing filming starting, I think today's May 18th, I'm yeah. pretty sure. Okay, so starting May 18th throughout the entire summer. So like fans can come in in the yep. stands yep. and get be to a see, part of the movie. Yeah, be a part of the movie, get to see the cars in person. Uh, we're going to have Brittany come out, some of the other actors coming in mm -hmm. and do autographs and really just bring in the whole whole full circle moment yeah I think it's like it's shedding light on such a fantastic sport 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 absolutely yeah, yeah. um and that's what you're even saying like the opportunity to create a movie around you know something that your father clearly yeah. has many many awards in yes uh I think that that's great I've never seen a movie based off of these cars I actually never even knew these cars existed until you'd be surprised how many people do not know we exist I know yes. but now it's like now it's gonna put it on such a scale where mm -hmm. like dude these are cool and that's the that's the the goal yeah that's we were discussing that prior when bobby reached out to me i was like there's no way this is true yeah you know like i there are racing movies out there but usually it's a, a more higher scale more money into it and yeah. when they're like we want to cover the modifieds i it's an opportunity you can't pass up yeah so yeah Hopefully we'll be bringing it to the big screen. Yeah, yes. we will. It's going to yeah. be great. And I think that we have a good team and everyone's vibing and it's a, it's a cool story and it, it's not just a story about racing and, you know, it's a story about mental health. It's a story about, um, you know, drugs and, um, kind of what this country is facing. And, uh, weirdly I have a, an ex, I have, well, my ex-husband passed from the drug that is, highlighted really? in this movie I had no idea. so it's insane like when I got cast for it and then I read this well when I read the script before I was cast yeah. and I read it and I was like whoa like I that's it's so heavy and it's so um special mm -hmm. because it's you know I I'm familiar with that story yeah so, so you, you can make an even deeper connection yeah wow Amazing. and I'm the one that's actually getting affected by yes this drug yeah so it's so, a very so interesting story it is it's not just race cars going in circles let no. me tell you what this is about a lot a lot of fighting and it's mm. it's very it's it's an edgier film yes, for sure a lot of emotions yeah amazing okay cool so guys thank you so much for joining in short sweet but really wanted to make sure to get Brittany on here while she was over here on the east coast so let everyone know how they can find you on social media. Um, I am Brittany Palmer on Instagram and Facebook and just Brittany Palmer Everywhere. across the board. Uh, BrittanyPalmer.com is my website for art stuff and trading cards and all the things. Awesome. Yeah. Well, give her a follow. Give her a shout out. Brittany, thank you so much. Thank I look you. forward to working with you. Thank you. You too. Right. Besties. Yes. <laughs> thank you guys. See ya.